Thank you, band. Good morning. Welcome to, am I, am I on? A am I on? Now can you hear me? I don't think I'm on. Am I not on? You can hear me through there? Is it just me? Oh, see there, now I can hear myself. Well, with that out of the way, welcome. Welcome to worship to those of you who are uh, here in person. Welcome to those of you who are worshiping at home. I am Pastor Kiri. Pastor Maria is right here in the front row. If you are new to our saviors, we uh, would love to connect with you. Now you got a lot of me going on. We would love to connect with you. There are connection cards uh, that are in the pew pockets in front of you. You could fill one of those out. Uh, if you're worshiping online, we also have a connection card on our website under Connect. Few things to highlight. If you didn't figure it out on the way in by the smells, we do have brunch this morning. You are all invited after worship. It is uh, to benefit our, our, put on by our youth who are going on the mission trip this summer to Niagara Falls. And then shortly after, after the brunch is, uh, after 
started, there is a children, youth, and family Easter party taking place uh, with an egg hunt. How fun is that? And that's uh, in the youth room beginning at, uh, the party's at 1145. So this is the start of Holy Week. That means we have worship services on Monday, Thursday, on Good Friday, and then on Easter Sunday. So that you've heard it out loud, our schedule does change for Easter Sunday morning. Services are at our traditional services at 8 o'clock. And then we have our contemporary services at 9.15 and 10.30. So 9.15 and 10.30, just remember a slight schedule change and you can figure out which service works best for you that day. Those are all of the announcements I'm going to highlight, so I invite you to stand as you're able, and from our places we will share God's peace with one another with a smile or a wave. You can remain standing for our call to worship. Isn't Jesus from Nazareth? Can anything anything good good come from from Nazareth? Nazareth? Do you think Jerusalem is safe? Does Does he he know know that that Pilate Pilate is here? Does he see the Pharisees watching? Is this the one we've been waiting for? Could this be the Messiah? The crowds are singing Hosanna. Should I lay down my cloak? Is this the beginning of the end? Should we follow? Should we watch? Should we sing Hosanna? Stay awake. He's on the move. Where is he going? Listen. Watch. Stay close. Sing Hosanna. 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 Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we are thrilled and humbled by your presence in our world and in our lives. You entered Jerusalem to cheering crowds, knowing that your journey there would lead to the cross, an earth-shaking moment in time. We are so grateful that you are our Redeemer King. May your presence continue to shake our world, moving us to words and deeds that reflect your goodness, justice, and love. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Please remain standing for the reading of the gospel and wave your palm branches with every hosanna. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this. The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Please join me in the Palm Sunday Litany. Jesus is coming. Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. He enters Jerusalem to cheering crowds. Hosanna to the son of David. Palm branches are strewn along his path. Hosanna in the highest heaven. His arrival shakes the city to its core. When Jesus comes, everything changes. He is our Redeemer and our King. We shout his praise. Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. One, two, three, four.
pray with me. Holy God, sometimes it's hard to hear you over the hosannas. Sometimes it's hard to hear you over our racing thoughts, our mental to-do lists, or our desire to fit in. Sometimes it's simply hard to hear you in this noisy world. So just as you stopped traffic in Jerusalem, stop traffic here. Pause the rush. Open the gates. Dwell among us until your word is all we can hear. We are listening. We are laying down our cloaks. Amen. You may be seated. Unless you are a kid coming forward for the children's offering and message. Children, come on up. Bring your palm branches if you've got them. Bring your palm branches. You'll need those. Come on up seat. I love the ripple of laughter that tells me that I've just done in public what I do at home all the time and around the office. I just sing everything. Sorry. Not sorry. <laughs> all right. Come on up. All right. Well, good morning. Raise your hand if you have ever been to a parade. Ever been to a parade? Yes. Parades are fun, aren't they? You can put your hands down. What are some of the things you like best about parades? Oh, you've been to a Disney parade and Mickey Mouse was in a parade. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's a great thing. What do you like about parades? Candy when they throw the candy. Yes. Yep. Nothing about parades. Oh, we're going to fix that today. What were you going to say? Candy? Yeah, I know. That's a crowd pleaser. What do you like about parades? Sometimes they have water guns and they'll shoot you with those if it's really hot out at the parade. Yeah. Yep. You like everything about parades? What were you going to say? Yeah, fire trucks and they got little cars. They got all sorts of cool stuff. Those are all great things about parades. Parades are a great way to get together and celebrate something. And today, we started worship with a Bible story that sounded like it had a parade in it, didn't it? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because today is Palm Sunday, the day we remember that Jesus rode into the city of Jerusalem, not on a horse, like you might see somebody in a parade, and not in a, riding in a car, like you might see in a parade today, but you're right, riding on a donkey. Very different than what we see in parades sometimes. And people were celebrating that Jesus was arriving in Jerusalem. They had heard a lot about him, and they were super excited that he was there. And so they cut palm branches off the trees, and they waved them, and they threw some of them in his path so he'd have something nice for the donkey to walk on, kind of like a red carpet made out of people's jackets and palm branches. Kind of cool. Now, that's not what we would do today, right? But in Bible times in Jerusalem, that's what they would do. They would wave palm branches. Somebody important was coming through. Oh, but we're not going to hurt each other with them. That's not cool. All right. So, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> All right. Now, does anybody know, does anybody know what next Sunday is? What's next Sunday? Easter, you are correct. Next Sunday is Easter, and so this week before Easter is a week we call Holy Week. Holy Week, right? And it was one of the most important weeks of Jesus' life. It starts today with Palm Sunday, and it goes through Good Friday when Jesus died on the cross, and takes us to the most important day of all, Easter, when Jesus' tomb was empty because he was alive again. So today... As we start to get ready for Easter, we are going to celebrate Palm Sunday by shouting, Hosanna. Can you say that? Hosanna! Very nice. Okay, and today, you get to make a parade as you head to children's ministry or back to your seats, wherever you're headed this morning. But we're going to do this together, and we're doing it step by step. All right? So, step one, we're standing up. All right. Stand up. Raise your palm branch high without poking anybody with it. Okay, nice. Now, 
turn around to face wherever you're going. So if you're heading out the center aisle to children's ministry, face that way. If you're headed back to your family, face that way. All right. Now, wave your palm branch and shout Hosanna. Hosanna. Oh, very nice. Okay, so now you're going to keep waving your palm branch and keep shouting Hosanna as you head out. Go. Hosanna. 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 Woo. Hosanna. Check it out, man. We got a parade right here in church this morning. Hosanna. 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 Jesus is here. Hosanna. Nice job. The not poking each other. No matter what age you are, right, friends, sitting right behind the pastors this morning? We, we, we've had chats already. It's very fun. I'm wearing protective eyewear, so it's all good. All right. We continue with our scripture reading this morning from 1 Timothy. On Palm Sunday, the crowd showed, shouted, Hosanna! And years later, Paul writes to Timothy of the saving work of the one who rode into the city to those cheers, Jesus Christ. Paul writes, the saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But for that very reason, I received mercy, so that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display the utmost patience as an example to those who would come to believe in him for eternal life. To the King of the ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now it is Elio's custom at the feast to release three prisoners chosen by the crowd. At that time, they are notorious prisoners called Barabbas. So when the crowd had gathered, Pilate asked them, Which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called the Christ? While Pilate was sitting on the judge's seat, his wife sent him this message. Don't have anything to do with that innocent man. For I have suffered great deal today in a dream because of him. But the chief priest and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus executed. Which of the two do you want me to release to you? Asked the governor. Barabbas, they answered. What shall I do then with Jesus, who is called Christ? Pilate asked. They all answered, crucify him. Why? What crime has this man committed? asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, Crucify him! When Pilate saw he was going, getting nowhere, but instead, inst instead an uproar was starting. He took the basin of water and washed his hands in front of the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood. It is your responsibility. And with that, Pilate washed his hands of Jesus, pushing away the basin and his part in the crucifixion of Jesus. The basin appeared in front of many people throughout history who had the opportunity to make the choice between accepting responsibility or washing their hands of it and pushing the basin away. Moments after Pilate pushes the basin away, it appears in front of Peter, who several times is confronted with the fact that he is a follower of Jesus. Peter washed his hands of Jesus 
by denying him three times before the cock crowed. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know the man. I do not know that man. And Peter pushes the basin away. The basin is presented to leaders of nations time and time again as they're confronted with war, tyranny, and crimes against humanity. The basin stands before them, forcing them to choose. Do they stand up against such action or look the other way? Accept the responsibility or wash their hands and push the basin away? We have decided not to get involved. It's none of our business. And again, the basin is refused, passed on to another and another. The basin passes through society and into local communities. Neighbors struggle with the issues of homelessness, unemployment, and crime. They are confronted with the choice to assist in providing solutions to these problems or refusing responsibility, refusing to get involved. Not in my backyard. They brought it upon themselves. Why don't they just get a job? Communities refuse to accept responsibility in the issues and push the basin away. Many times with anger and vindictiveness, but more often than not with apathy. The basin travels even deeper into the fabric of society and into the family structure itself. Family members wrestle with difference of opinion, identity, or beliefs. Members are confronted with the choice of dialogue and understanding, or shame, hate, and denial. He is dead to me. Don't come back in this house again. We don't talk about it. And again, the basin and the responsibility is rejected. Hands are washed, relationships severed, and no one takes ownership. The basin is moved on to someone else's hands. We are all presented with the basin throughout our lives. What choices do we make? Do we take the easy way out? How clean are our hands after all the washing we do? You can't hold me responsible. I grew up this way. I just don't understand. You can't expect me to change now. Throughout our lives, we push the basin away many times. Jesus was presented with the basin. But instead of washing his hands with it, he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, wrapped a towel around his waist, and after that, he poured water into the basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with a towel that was wrapped around him. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you must also wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Jesus accepts responsibility in the matter of humility and servanthood and teaches his disciples to do the same. Jesus chooses to hold on to the basin instead of pushing it away. The disciples push the basin away by betraying Jesus by denying Jesus, and by walking away from Jesus. They didn't love others as they loved themselves. We push the, away the basin. We betray Christ in our actions. We deny Christ with our words. Our betrayal and denial occur every time we push away the basin. We don't love others as we love ourselves. But Jesus takes the basin and washes the feet of his disciples. Even Judas is present to share in the foot washing and the meal. Jesus did wash their feet. Jesus takes the place of the lowest servant. He accepts the basin of servanthood. Jesus loves them to the very end. Jesus loves his disciples knowing they will betray him and deny him. 
Jesus provides for every last one of us. Jesus took the form of a servant for us. Jesus provided us with baptism and communion. Jesus loves us to the very end. The basin that is passed along is the basin that holds water in our baptism. By our baptism, we are called to take the form of servants. By our baptism, we are called to love others as Christ has loved us. And by loving, by accepting the basin of our baptism, people will know us as Christ's disciples.
take a moment now to join together in prayer as we speak and listen to how God is in our midst. God, you are a living God. You walk headfirst into the world's suffering. You don't shy away from the truth. You are bold in seeking justice. You're humble in taking power. Inspire us to follow your lead, shown so clearly in Jesus as we accept the basin. And God, you are God of all. We pray that you would protect and restore dignity to all who are scorned or persecuted for who or who they are or what they believe. Guide people and leaders to find God common ground and seek the good of all. As violence continues in our country, bring an end to mass shootings. Be with the people of Tennessee as they pick up the pieces after last week's tragedy and bring peace to places around the world where conflict runs deep, including Ukraine. God, you are the God of hope. So be present with those feeling isolated, lonely, or fearful today. Send comfort and help to those impacted by recent natural disasters, including tornadoes. And bring healing to all those in need of it, including Michelle Brown, Lindsay Howe, Angelo, Brad, Brittany Danielson, Donald Nelson, Bobby Mayenberg, Gloria Preem, Daniel Schmitz Jr., Dick Potsmith, Jerome Bogleman, Audrey Lundstrom, Jim Zeke, Sherry, Randy Hill Jr., Lynn Gleason, Michelle Leslie, David Kappelhoff, Jovita Romero, Brenda Varney, and Pat Nelson. And God, finally, we know that you hear our prayers. You know our pain and you know our hope. In Holy Week and in every week, you are always carrying us from the pain of the world into the hope of a new day. That is where you are headed, and that is where we follow. May it be so. Amen. Well, this is the time when we consider our offering. Uh, today, I just want to lift up that our gifts come together to keep our building running, which gives the community we can offer this as a place for community events and for uh, community to gather. So we, uh, one of those ways that happens is we can host blood drives several times a year, which we did just the, in late March. The most recent blood drive, 48 pints of blood were collected. And so we give thanks for those who gave, for those who make it possible for this building to be in the community. And we pray for those who receive those pints of blood as well. There are many ways you can give. If you're here in person, you can place your offering in the baskets by the doors as you leave this morning. If uh, you, uh, you can always, other ways to give, you can mail in a check, you can download uh, the Vanco app and give through that or give through the website oursaviorslc.org. And today we are blessed that we have a musical offering.
wonderful. Thank you to our bells. Let's pray as we give thanks to God for all the gifts shared. Generous God, you seek us out and give us good things. As we share those resources to spread your good news, help us seek out the hungry and the weary, the hopeful and the faithful. Remind us to seek the good in every person we pass, knowing that you can be found in each of us and in this meal of bread and wine. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We join together as we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Just a few notes about communion. First and most important, all are welcome to receive communion here at Our Saviors to receive the gifts of Jesus' grace and mercy. You can choose to come forward for communion or you can commune in your seats with a kit from the ushers. When the servers are ready at the front of your section, they'll give you a nod. You can come forward row by row from front to back. When you reach the servers, you can hold out your hands. We'll drop a wafer in your hands. You can then step to the next server where this is our second week now with our new chalices. Uh, it's a divided chalice. So the main section will have wine. It will be red. The smaller section will have grape juice that is white. So you can then dip your wafer into the chalice uh, and eat those together as you return to your seats by the side aisles. Center sections, you'll come down the middle aisle and down the sides. Outer section, you, you will come up along the wall and then go back by those same aisles. Uh, if you need gluten-free wafers, those are available at all stations. Additional details are on your happenings. And if you have someone with you who doesn't take communion, please uh, bring them forward with you to receive a blessing. So for those communing in place or at home, hear these words as you receive the meal. The body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. I invite the communion servers forward.
receive the blessing. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. Seeking God, we look for you in the mirror, in strangers, in sunrises, in the laughter of children, and in meals shared together. At this table, all are fed, all are welcomed, and there is room for everyone. At this table, you meet us in our seeking, and we see you clearly. Gratefully, we pray. Amen. Just a, a note about after worship. If you are uh, picking up kids from kids' ministry, feel free to head out the back doors. If you don't have kids to pick up and you're staying for brunch, the flow would work best if you come forward and go out the side doors, uh, and the line will form in the rotunda and then through. We should have plenty of seats for everyone. Worship will continue with a dramatic reading of the Passion Narrative, and congregation, we do have parts. Those will appear on the screen when it's our turn. So when Pilate saw he was gaining nothing, but rather a riot was beginning, he took water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. And all the people answered, His blood, blood will be on, on us and, and on, on our, our children. children. Then he released for them Barabbas, and having scrouged Jesus, delivered him to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the praetorium, and they gathered the whole battalion before him, and they stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. Braiding a crown of, thro of thrones, thorns, they put, his, put it on his head and put a reed in his right hand, and kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, Hail King, King of, of the, the Jews. Jews. And they spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of his robe and put his own clothes on him and led him away to crucify him. As they were marching out, they came upon a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. They caught they, the, the man they compelled to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they offered him wine to drink, mingled with gall. But when he tested it, he would, not, he would not drink it. And when they crucified him, they divided his garments among them by casting lots. And they sat down and kept watch over him there. And over his head, they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, King of the Jews. Then two robbers who were crucified him crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. And those who passed by him derided him, wagging their, hand, their heads and saying, You, you who, who would, would destroy, destroy the temple and build, and build it in three days, days save, save yourself. If, if you, you are, are the Son, Son of God, God come down, down from the cross. cross. So also this chief priest with the scribes and elders mocked him, saying, He saved save others. Him. He, he cannot, cannot save, save himself. himself. He, he is, is the king, king of Israel. Israel. Let, Let him come, come down, down now from, from the cross, and we will believe, believe in him. him. He, he trusts, trusts in God. God. Let, Let God deliver him now, if he desires. For, for he said, I am the son of God. And the robbers who were crucified him with him also reviled him in the same way. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani? That is, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And some of the bystanders heard it, saying, This man is calling Elijah. And one of them at once ran and took a sponge, filled it with vinegar, and put it on a reed 
and gave it to him to drink. But others said, Wait, Wait. let, let us, us see whether Elijah, Elijah will, will come, come down to save, to save him. him. And Jesus cried out with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two, from top to bottom. The earth shook, and the rocks were split. The tombs were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. When the centurions and those who were with him, kept keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were filled with awe and said, Truly, this was the Son of God.
please stand for the blessing. As you leave this place, may God bless you with seeking. As you seek and as you wonder, may you find what the centurion found. Receive the blessing of our loving God, who is always seeking us. Amen. Go in peace, seeking and following Jesus to the cross and beyond. We will. Thanks be to God. Thank you.